we're here starting today. Yeah. Uh, we got a special guest yeah. sitting off to the side that you guys may or may not see at some point. I would like him to just show his little face. He's he's a podcast celebrity. People yes. comment that a lot. Yeah. Charlie's a legend on this podcast. That's yeah. what that's what you don't want to show say. your face, eh? No, no, we'll bring you in when we need you. It's all it's all good. So Charlie's Charlie's home for a Christmas break and happy to have him here happy to, happy to happy <laughs> to happy to hang out with him which is I'm cool so, i'm so glad to have my boy back yeah yeah he skated with me this morning yeah good skate had good some of the big boys out this morning yeah. and uh we're in prime time busy time so we might, it's probably gonna be a little bit shorter today but that's that's okay so Wait. you guys can deal with it um i think that's all i got you want to talk about your your gitch there <laughs> oh my god okay so it, and the reason i wanted to wait for this is because we had a speaker come in and talk to our kids yesterday they were, that was part of this organization. So yeah. it kind of flew. Yeah. It flows. Perfect. Yeah. We're in flow right now. That's perfect. Okay. So we talked about on the podcast that we don't wear Guelph. I don't wear Guelph Storm stuff because I don't want to be super dad. Right. So on a, a podcast a couple weeks ago, whatever we were talking, he was wearing a Saginaw hat. <laughs> Charlie's making fun of me. He was wearing a Saginaw hat and... Uh, we, we addressed, and a shirt, and we were addressing how awesome it is and how I'm not a super, super dad, and I'm not going to go around wearing Guelph, and not my, my son is Charlie and all that stuff. So, uh, and then I was I was explaining how Jerv came back and got him a t-shirt and a hat and all that stuff to say thanks for all your training and stuff and his appreciation. So we were whining about, so yesterday Jerv came in, and he uh, had a bag, and I got a pennant. Like, <laughs> No, no, it's, yeah, well, if you want, I got a super fan pennant, uh, the hat, the shirt, and a pair of Saginaw spirit, spirit socks. socks. <laughs> so, they, so they heard, they heard us, uh, or they heard you chirping them on the on that on that episode, saying, "Where's yeah. my stuff?" Yeah. And then they showed up yesterday, coming yeah. home with the, yeah, the so nice care package, of Saginaw gear, yeah, which is hilarious, but which, which is awesome. So, anyways, it's very nice, and I'm gonna wear it because I, uh, I'm not super dad right now, right. And right? it's nice and labeled with your name. Yeah. I like that. They want this is something that we do at Power Talk, yeah. so we know that everybody's... Yeah, we know who everyone is. is. Yeah, we need to make sure we know. <laughs> yeah, so it was... Uh, oh, here, hurry up, hurry up. Uh, yeah. So here's this, uh, here we go. I'm a Saginaw Spirit fan. Yeah. Right? It's great. So no, any, uh, anyways, I got a nice relationship with the Saginaw Spirit, to be honest with you. Uh, um, one, of, one of the man- one of the general managers is a friend of mine, um, and, um, uh, you know, obviously asked me about some players, and very thankful that... Um, I spoke highly of, of Jerv and Jerv got, you know, they're very happy with that recommendation and he's doing so well and they have nothing but great things to say about him. So they're happy. So anytime I need something from Brian, he's, he's willing to, to reciprocate his appreciation for it, which is very nice, even though I don't need it because, you know, it's part of my job and whatever. Anyway, so he came in yesterday and spoke to our kids um which was great and and he scouted you know some of our stuff we had a couple teams here so brian was able to stick around and uh he talked to the kids and we're going to talk about that about uh scouting and what they look for in players so we had our junior development skate yesterday and uh had some kids out and they learned some fitness from you uh i didn't teach any hockey except for afterwards and they played a great game and uh and a couple of scouts were watching and it was awesome so brian talked to the kids after yeah, it was, it, was a, it was actually a really cool day. I want to talk about it just for a second sure. because some people, a lot of people that are starting to listen because people are listening from around, they don't really know exactly what we would necessarily do in person. Right. And that's partially my fault. I should probably like try to post some more of that stuff that we do on the ice, whatever. But um, so we do. You know what? You know, can I cut you off? Yeah. I'm, I was always, the reason, like you could say it's it's part your fault, but it's part mine, for, mine too, because I don't like throwing my face out there. Like like doing the podcast, to start the podcast was like, people are going to know me and I don't like it. And I don't like to talk about myself or my business. And I don't like to say, well, here's what I do and stuff like that. So partially it's my fault, but I guess to advertise, you got to do that. Well, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like it, re- it really doesn't, it doesn't really have a lot to do with you. It's just like even just videotaping the clinics or whatever. Like it I, know, nec- I don't it like doesn't, it. It doesn't have to be like you in front or anything, yeah. but even just like t- Anyways, just going back, showing showing our the camp stuff. So on the ice, you train, we train, we bring in guys for on ice and off ice stuff. So normally you you'll work with you'll normally work with OHL guys and pro guys, and then the elite older AAA kids yeah. that are kind of preparing for the draft. So yeah. what one of the things that we're starting to really kind of hone in on for at PowerTech is working with those kids over the off season and the summertime especially, but then yeah. through the year keeping contact with them and you usually have an elite group of kids that you work with yeah. during the year and, and all that stuff. So it was cool. This is the first time we did this around Christmas is just have them in for 
kind of a little touch touch point day and we get all the all the kids kind of locally from here to chatham about an hour away and uh, yeah about an hour away and hopefully that'll be something that we could even grow further yeah, we into will. the into the into the future but it's cool that we get they get to come in play like a pretty competitive game it's actually a good game Very that they good play game. against each other and uh with a couple different age groups and then we had some some guys come out and scout from from the ohl so they get a little bit of exposure that way yeah. and then uh like you said brian was gracious enough to hang out and talk after yeah and just kind of give some points to the kids and he was talking about a lot of a lot of good stuff made a lot of good good points a lot of the stuff that that we're going to talk about today is is i don't want to say common sense because common sense isn't that common but it's things that people know or that they well, would 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 think when someone says like oh yeah obviously that thing or whatever but um if you want to i was just going to talk about the list yeah so so first. yeah so it's like, like so to be real honest we've had a like incredibly busy week like working 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 and and we finished our last podcast and you know it was been a really busy weekend right we would we have we had a lot of stuff going on yeah yeah right. anyway so we're here today and it's podcast day and we really like we had some topics but not enough that we really honed in on but ironically enough brian yesterday uh, when he was talking to the kids about you know the scouting and all this kind of stuff he came out with the very i think it's popular on the internet or in social media the 10 things that take zero talent yeah. that will get your rewards or something like that and when you mentioned that like when he said it i'm like okay those things whatever and then you said we should talk about that a little bit and i'm like ah, it, it seems kind of boring because it's like to me it's like yeah no shit yeah but i look at it and i'm going yeah prob- probably people don't probably think it's a cute little saying and stuff like that mm-hmm. they're having given a lot of thought but we're going to put it towards hockey nothing else mm-hmm. if you want to apply it to someone else that's fine but if we apply this to hockey it's great and and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk yeah. about 10 things that take zero effort. Yeah. So if he finished his talk with, with that, he said, here's 10 things that require zero talent. And talent. Yeah. Zero talent. That's not, what it not is. Not effort. Zero talent, right? So you don't, need, you don't need any skill to do these things. Yeah. And these are just things that will make you a better hockey player, a better person, somebody that people want yeah. around. Like yeah. We're just going to zero it in on hockey because yeah. it's, hockey, <clears throat> it's specific to hockey. Yeah. And that's fine. So, so. We're just going to walk through each of these and just talk about it back and forth a little bit because when, <laughs> listening to what he was saying yesterday, it's all really good stuff. And it reminded me of just like kind of Jordan Peterson thing where he'll say things to you that you know, yeah. but hearing him put it to words is like, oh yeah, like that's right. So maybe hoping a little to do a little bit of that for yeah. some of the younger guys yeah. or parents that don't really think about this stuff. Yeah. So you can fire away on that. Yeah. So first, first one being being on time. <clears throat> like, so, and for me, that's like so common sense. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've been late for anything in my life. And if I was... I was probably still early. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is a hell of a late wicket early. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it would be late. But if I was ever late for anything, and I can't, actually can't remember, remember if I've ever been late for something, um, I, I really don't. I, 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 I think I'd remember. Mm-hmm. I have never been late for anything. I, I get up and I go. And, and so the point is, is that number one, it's for me. Um, I need to be early so that I can be prepared and I'm not leaving anybody ready and I, there's wiggle room if in case something happens and then shit happens. Yeah. So, uh, uh, that's that. And, and, and as from a hockey, hockey perspective, it's like, okay, let's look at it from a couple of different perspectives. If I show up, if my coach with, I can't believe you'd have to say, okay, if the coach says, uh, whatever, it's nine o'clock and he's there at nine o'clock. I don't know why in the world you think nine o'clock is a good time to be there. It yeah. makes zero, like that makes zero sense to me because if he says nine o'clock and I'm walking in at one minute to nine, nine o'clock or nine oh one, I would expect the furry eyeball staring at me. Yep. You know, like yep. that means I might even be there at eight thirty. Like seriously. Yep. So I'm ready. So that that coach, when I walk into the room because I'm aware of what my coach might think of me. Every time it's nine o'clock, you're always here early. Okay, this is good. It's never bad. Right. Unless you're skipping school to do it or you're giving up responsibility, it's never a bad thing to be early. Number two, you're, respect, you're showing respect for his time. Number th- three, four, whatever, you're, you're respecting your teammates yep. and, or, or the people that you, that you need to, you know, wh- whoever you're dealing with. Right. So being on time is important. Being to on time also, if you're smart, gets you, leaves you the ability to get a little bit prepared while you're there. Right. right? So not only be early, be early, be ready. Yep. I mean, I just add a couple things Done. on that. So I talked, I talked, it's funny we brought bringing this one up because I was, I got in a discussion with my brother about it because my brother's 
a plus or minus guy when he okay. when he has a time to be somewhere. Yep. So you're, he was having it was a genuine discussion, just like if you're a couple minutes late, like what does it matter? Like if you're so if I say six o'clock and I w- walk in at six o three, does it actually matter that much? And my for me it's yes. And for me it's as, yeah. Aside aside from what what you're saying, and there's exceptions to the rule, obviously. Like if your buddy says, hey, come over at seven o'clock and you show up and it's a little bit after seven, it's actually not appropriate to be early because they might ha- be have something yeah, yeah, until yeah, seven, right? You don't yeah, want to show yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. So there's yeah, some yeah, yeah. there's some exceptions to the yeah. rule. But anyways, adding on to what you're saying, aside from the respect thing and yeah. the ability to be prepared, which is obviously very important, yeah. there's two other things with when you're when you're late. What I said to my brother is, would you be late to a job interview? Right. And obviously anyone with a brain says, no, of course not. Right. And <laughs> with a brain. Okay. But, but the answer is the question then is why, why is it, why would you not be late for that? Bingo. Right. Yeah. And so <clears throat> when you're talking about it in, in those terms, yeah. aside from what you said, which is obviously true, you want to be there yeah. and be able to get prepared and you're respecting other people's time and all that stuff. The other two things is if you've ever been late for something and everyone has at some point where you feel like you're rushing. Yeah. Think about the mentality that puts you in. Everyone's been in their car driving when they feel like they're going to be late. Yeah. And you're zipping in and out yep. of cars. You're ready to yell at anyone that cuts you off. Yep. Or if there's a train, it's so it's just yep. Yep. Ca- causes a bad attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you're going into your task yeah. with a bad attitude. Yeah, very good. Whether you want to or not. Yep. So that's that. That's another bonus thing yep. for me. And then the second thing is you'll start to forget stuff if you're in a rush because you're late. Yeah. You know, so that's one thing that I notice all the time. We did the it time. the other day, right, Charlie? Yeah. <clears throat> We're not going to talk about it, but not you. You didn't do anything wrong. We're just saying we had, remember you had to go back to Guelph yesterday. Yeah. So if you're, so if you're, if you're rushing, that's where you start to make bad, you have, you either forget things or you make bad decisions because you're in a rush because you don't have time to think things through. Right. So those are two little ads I'll I'll throw onto that. But, and that's why it's so big, but the the respect thing, the time thing being prepared, all that is, is obviously huge. But secondary is those things. Like you want to go to, you want to show up to your event with a bad attitude because you're rushing. It's just an imposed bad attitude or it's stressful. You get anxiety about it because you can feel that you're late and you feel like you're in a rush, right? Which is no good. So, So there you go. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Yep. Thank you for that. That's a, that's a great point. Work ethic goes without saying. Yeah. What's work ethic? To me, this is the thing, right? So we talk about this all the time. What is work ethic? What is working hard? So to me is, is at, well, okay. I just got off the phone with what team? You tell them. Calgary Flames. Calgary Flames. One of the scouts called me about Blair. And... We're talking about, he's asking about a player, about blah, 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 blah. And asked about, you know, one of the one of the um, uh, flaws, I guess, or w- one of the things that the, the player needed to work on. And he said, has he ever came up to you and asked specifically for the work? And I go, no. And I had to explain how, like maybe why he doesn't do that. But that was would be work ethic is... is you know what you have to work on. It's the details of the work. So yes. Mm-hmm. So for example, we could go and do, you could come like this morning we skated and we could go and do a shooting drill or a stick handling shooting drill with like a little details. Okay. So let's, one of them this morning was, uh, there's a shot in the shot, feet moving, try not to separate the puck from the stick so that you can push down on the ice. These guys are pros, Charlie pros, right? Hit the net obviously, but that wasn't a detail come out from the corner and you're either going to do a punch jam, which is a really quick turn or a, a load explode to the forehand and the specific details. And then when you're shooting, always moving the feet, hiding the puck in your feet. Those are details. You're not five. You're professionals. This guy's going to get, dra- this guy's going to get drafted. So the details. So, so if you're actually working hard or not work, if you're not working hard, you're just going to do the drill and eliminate all the details. So you might be going fast. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you're working hard. Your brain is not engaged. You're not measuring. Well, that was good. That was that felt wrong. That does, what, coach was that good. Coach, how do I do it better? And I know today was actually a nice lighter skate. But no matter what you yeah, do, or you want to get a better shot. So I noticed just from the kids playing uh, since the summertime, little little gaps. Like him, that guy Charlie, his shot was not as good as it was in the summertime. He's on the ice every day, and and he spent. I got, and he even said it. So I, I was telling him, don't separate the puck, a couple things. And then they started coming off real nice. Because what happens is when you start doing the work during the season, it's just work. It's the grind. You forget. Another day. It's Tuesday. It's Wednesday. You forget the important stuff that gets you there. Yeah, you really do. So 
going back to that session this morning, the, the one guy was like, I'll just do the drill. You weren't working hard. That's what it's, you're doing work, but you're not, the work ethic's not there. It's not the depth. It's not the detail that's going to make you better. So there's one thing to work. There's one thing to work smart. There's one, th- one thing to have a purpose and like to really dig in and make yourself better. Yeah. Well, so that's to me work ethic. Yeah. And one thing you said, I want to key in on, cause I <laughs> obviously I agree with all that is uh, going fast. Isn't the same as working hard, right? That's a, one of the things I want to key on because people think that you going as fast as you can go. Yeah. People can confuse that for working hard. And it can be you're working hard yep. when you're going fast. Yeah. But sorry. It's one way. Well, I was going to say, Brian was talking about that yesterday with the kids. Yeah. So the Saginaw scout, he was saying he was watching a pro skate and he was watching, uh, and he named some really good players, doing, a, it was a drill that was a hip opening drill. Right? You, you heard this. Yep. And uh, he goes, the, there was probably like 12 guys out or something like that. And they do it and they did it real fast to say they did it. Mm-hmm. They worked. Zach Wierenski did it extremely slow. Why, why was he doing it slow? Is because he's lousy? No, because he, in his head, he's going, okay, I want to do this right. I understand the purpose. I need to open my hips. I need right. to get the proper push. I need to get on this edge. I need to head on a swivel, all the details to make it good. And then as he did it the next time, it was a little quicker, a little quicker, a little quicker. My theory that I got from the military, slow, smooth, fast. Mm-hmm. Do it slow. Not necessarily slow, but with thought and intention. So you have that mind-muscle connection. When you get that, then you could do the speed, providing that you're doing it right. So now you get smoother. Now you can do it fast because mm-hmm. you're doing it correctly. Right. Otherwise, you're just going to do fast, poorly, and then you just be you do something poorly faster. Right. And so for and for work ethic, it requires skill to be able to be intentional. Like it's a skill to be able to have intention. It's painful. But it doesn't require any talent. Like you don't need any natural ability to be no. able to do that. That's or right. Or have a natural inclination to be able to do that. Right. You just need to start to focus on paying attention, yeah. you know, and that's, that's a key thing for trying to actually, actually working hard is paying attention. You have to pay attention yeah. and do things on purpose. Yeah. And that's what will lead you to actually having a good work ethic. Yeah. Not just I'm going as fast as I can go and yeah. that equals work hard. It's yeah. no, no, that's not right. So if you change gears into like fitness, cause this is what you love to do. Yeah. There's two ways to work out. You can work out really hard and say that's work ethic and it is. Yeah. So you could come here or so let's, let's say the goal is to, like, okay, but what's the goal? To work hard or is it to get a result? Yeah. So if I want to, let's go with speed. Okay. So if I want to be faster, then I have to be smart enough. And like the work ethic piece is actually the rest piece. That you're, you're, you're whatever they say, it's a sprint. You sprint and you do your technique and all that stuff, right? And you sprint and now you have to rest. But you could work harder and just mm-hmm. sprint and sprint, sprint and do, I did 20, you did five. Right. But it doesn't make you smart. It doesn't yes. You worked hard. Right. If you want to get, if you're, if you're in a hypertrophy, which <laughs> means you're gaining some size, right? Yeah. So you want to gain some size. You, if you, if you're, you can work hard and, and not take breaks and maybe skip in between mm. and stuff, or you can do, you know, eight, 10 sets of 10 with like heavy push and then like a really good concentric. That's the important piece is to have the control the, or the eccentric so that you're building muscle on the way down. You're always having tension on your muscle. So, or you could do 10, work real hard, do some skipping and sweat a lot, but you're working dumb now. You're not doing what your intent purpose. Right. So that's work ethic is, yeah. is having the brain involved. Yeah. And just one more example before you go to the next one. Well, Charlie, Charlie, remember this from the summertime we were at the hill Yeah. and we do uh, sprint starts up the hill, different, so like 5, 10, 15 meters, yeah. 20 meters, yeah. five or six of each of them. So I have them start in different postures to before they get going. Yeah. And one of the guys that was there, he actually, I would say he works hard. I'm not saying he doesn't work hard, okay. but more to the working smart kind of piece that you're talking about. Like this all plays into your work ethic. He, as the sprints get longer, obviously it, it's more difficult. So you need longer time to rest. 100%. So they're coming down and they would come down and go again. So they would finish. I know the, what you're talking about. Yeah, they would. Finish, I, I wasn't even there. They finish the sprint, then they would come back down, and then just as they're getting back down, they're ready to go. And yeah. it was actually Charlie who was at the top of the hill, and he was just like, "These guys are like they're going too fast. Like I'm not ready yet when right. they go. Like I st- I'm not. I can't go as fast as I can. I'm still tired. Yeah. So I, and I told him I was just like, "You take the rest then. Like you rest until you're ready to go. Yeah. And then I'm obviously I'm constantly reminding the guys. Yeah. But one of the comments that I made to the group afterwards, like in one of their breaks saying you guys need to make sure that you're taking the rest, you know? Yeah. And then that that kid that was kind of rushing it was saying, well, I just want to get through it. And 
okay, I know that you want to get through it because it's a bagger, but it actually won't be as much of a bagger if you take the rest, man. You know? So my, my thing with that is like, see, there's another skill with work ethic where it takes work to actually listen and pay attention. Yeah, that like is part of work ethic. Co- yeah, it's, yeah, it's like you have you to have the discipline to follow the protocol, right? Yeah, yeah. you need so to follow the wanna, protocol. Do, do, do you want to just appear like you're a machine? Mm-hmm. Scientifically, you're not. Like your yeah. body will need the proper rest. You're no different than any other human. Well, and there's a time and a place for that. Like yeah. we do our beatdown workouts, man. <laughs> like, well, that's what I'm saying. We do, yeah, like, we this do, is not that. This is not that. So and that is part of the work ethic, right? <laughs> yeah. You got to be smart yeah. about what you're doing. So yeah. that's good. Uh, the next one says uh, effort. So what's the difference between work ethic and effort? And like, so that's why I was like, this is kind of like when I first read it, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. But if you, if you put some thought into it, what's the difference between work ethic and effort? Effort now is like, what do you like? Are you squeezing when, it, like, are you actually? And it doesn't even necessarily mean like. Let's say we'll go back to the weightlifting. Like, if you're doing a strength, a strength exercise, effort's going to be yeah, pushing it. You know, let's let's do 250 pound squat. And let's say it's hard. So if you're getting to uh, and your your goal is to get to five reps, and if you if you're putting the effort in to get it done, but are you putting the effort to actually get strong? So can you squeeze 270, 260? Are you squeezing, like, like are you getting all the juice out of that lemon? But now we take it into hockey. It's like, okay, yeah, did you work hard today in practice? Yeah. Okay. Did you actually work hard? Like, when you, do you finish your drills right to the end? Do you, are you shooting to score? Like, there's the purpose part, but is that, like, are you actually shooting? So are you shooting hard? Are you, are you, um, when you're doing your battle drills, are you actually battling? Is there more there? Mm-hmm. And there's a big difference between effort and trying. Yeah, and, and I, giving it some effort, but like like true, true effort. Where I, you, your tongue's hanging out. Yeah, I think that the effort thing to me, I'm gonna put it like synonymous with the intention part of it, right? Yeah. Like if you're being intentional about what you're doing, yeah. that's how you're gonna maximize your effort. So if you're going through a drill as fast as you can, I would say you're not putting as much effort in as you should. Right, you're just going yeah. through the motions. Yeah. Man. You're going through the drill. That's fine, yeah. but you're not actually putting in all the effort that I need you to put in. Right. You know, the easiest thing t- for me as an example is when guys are doing their mobility injury prevention type stuff. So easy to float through that. Mm. So easy to just go through the motions, get yeah. them done, do your yeah. two rounds of five each side, and yeah. all that shit. And it's really easy to not really, really be in it yeah. when you're doing that stuff because it's low demand. You're not really, you're not getting your heart rate up. Yeah you're not working towards failure at all. So it feels like you're not doing stuff. Like mm-hmm. it feels like you're not doing anything that's useful. Mm-hmm. So it's really easy to just mail it in on that and just coast through it, yeah. you know? And actually one of the kids that, the kid that I was talking about before with the sprints, he's actually a kid that act, puts a good amount of effort into that that stuff because we'll do just a mobility thing and he'll be leaking, yeah. man. He will be leaking and yeah. it's all slow. It's on purpose and he's not the best at it either, but he's trying to do the stuff properly you know and that's that's the difference with effort for me effort because it's again it's not just going fast for effort either effort doesn't mean maximum know, speed know. it means maximum intention is where you're well, really putting it, your effort it, you know? it's like it's like when you train kids and when i go on the ice and i train players like i get i have a i could have a clinic that looks really good i have i can do that in a second mm-hmm. i could do a clinic that parents will go and the kids will go that was freaking awesome but i know or you know if you were actually into it like, am I actually running a clinic or am I here? Am I going to fix uh, deficiencies in players? Yep. And there's a big difference, right? That's, that takes effort. That takes me to be on, takes you to be on. And, uh, and, and you know the truth. And that's, the, I guess, the thing with effort is that at every, every single day, you have to be able to look in the mirror. And, and if you ask that question, did I give it everything I have? And listen, you can't give 100%, 100% of the time. Mm-hmm. But can you sit there and say, you know, if you had a pray, Charlie, if you have a practice or a game, and or if you if you're if you're playing against someone and you know that's going to be a tough go, you know that's going to be a tough shift because this guy's a battle, he battle, he's bigger, whatever. Hmm. Am I going to go to that corner as hard with him as I am going to be with him because I know that that one won't be as bad? Mm-hmm. I'm going to do that shift after shift. Yeah, it hurts. It right. it might be emotionally hard. Like you know, the effort is a different type of effort. So. Anyways, you got you, you, you. That's something that I would suggest people ask themselves, and it's not to beat yourself up because they're just you, you, these are good questions to ask yourself and to measure yourself, right? Yep. If you want to be a pro, right? Yeah, no, that, that's good. Well said. Do I want to be a pro? I, if I want to be a pro, did I actually? Could I have done better? And if the answer is yes, then that's something. It's not. That's a good answer. Now we, can we let's let's get more out of it. 
Pretty simple. Yep. You know, so that's that. Next one I love. I talk about this a lot with the kids is body language. Love this one. <laughs> I do. I could talk about body language a, a lot. And, and <laughs> Charlie's laughing like, oh, like your body, eh, Dad? Body language? No, I, I, I could talk about this a lot because it speaks volumes. This is one of those subtle things. It just speaks volumes about a player, about a human. I always say that. Like, it's almost attitude, but, you know, you can walk in Tim Hortons, right? You can walk in, slouch, have a coffee, and you're going to get a coffee. Or you can walk in and say, hey, how you doing? How's your day? Can I get a coffee, please? With a little bit of zip, and the coffee comes out. You're like, there you go, sir. Thanks, man. Yeah. Body language is everything. Yeah. Right? Like, you walk around with your shoulders up, your head up. It's good. Anyways, as a hockey player, there's so many signs. Like Brian was saying yesterday, like when scouts are watching a game and you and you take a shot on net and you miss the net and you go, ugh, and like it's everyone else's fault or like, oh, I'm better than that. Like everyone knows in the rink that you didn't try to miss the net and not score. Yeah. <laughs> everyone knows. Yeah. So by you making that gesture of the frustration or, oh, I'm too good for that, whatever it is, it's like you're sending the wrong message. Yep. Um, it's, it's, it's the, uh, um, guys that, that, that go to face offs, you know, and I've, I've seen, I was just actually one of the guys I was watching that I trained playing the other day. He's cool. Yeah. So he cool goes, he, he's cool. Yeah. So he was at the face off just waiting. Like, I think his hands on the hip first for the, like just being cool. Yeah. I don't want to show that I'm actually into this thing. Right. Cause you know, and it's like, it rubs me the wrong way. And it's like, I'm not scouting them, yeah. but I want to say smarten up and just grit your teeth a little bit. And right. It's, yep. it's, it's, but anyways, all the body language. Um, and I could talk a lot about this to be honest with you. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll hop in quick. Yeah. Yeah. You, you I know we gotta, we gotta keep the list going, but yeah. I, I got just two quick examples. So the one kid that listens to the podcast, he messaged me maybe a couple of months ago now okay. and he was getting the sniffs that things weren't really working out with the team that he was on. So he was asking me, what should I do? And my advice to him was, go talk to your coach and whatever. And he's like, well, yeah, but what do you think? Whatever. And I told him, I said, you know what your issue is. When you're on the ice, you look like you don't give a shit at all. And you move slow. You move slow oh, yeah, yeah, that guy, yeah. and you look like you don't care. Yeah. And you know that you do that. Your body language sucks. And that's just, that's, that's what it is. And you know that and you need to work on it. And that's just the honest truth. And it's unfortunate because he does care and he actually isn't the way his body language yeah. looks, Yeah. you know? And this is yeah. where maybe we can draw the, the line between attitude and body language, right? Because mm -hmm. he does, I wouldn't say he has a bad attitude. I would say he actually has a good attitude. He's a, he's a, he's a upbeat kid in his own kind of yep. monotone way, yep. but he's never, he, I've never, would never describe him as having a bad attitude, yeah. but he does have bad body language. Yeah, and that's definitely. and that's just from from the habit of being that teenager that's just like slouched and chill and cool yeah. guy and like yeah. that kind of deal, and people notice it, and that's what yeah. everyone says to him too. Yeah, everyone tells him that 100%. he knows that that's one of the problems. Yeah, you know, and so that's that's one example of that. The opposite of that, we got a kid um, that we were just watching him outside to, out there today. Actually, unreal, unreal young player. Okay, I know you. And this kid has phenomenal body language on the ice. Because he's probably the best guy on the ice almost every time I've seen him play. And he's got guys all over him, mauling him, hacking him, hooking him, tripping him, whacking him, cheap shot, chirping him. And I've never once seen him any kind of retaliate or retaliation, never looks at the ref, never says nothing. I've seen him play a few times, yep. probably five times now I've he seen him play. He just plays. And then today, same thing. Guys all over him and he just yeah. plays. Does it yeah. doesn't react at all? Yeah, which which is which is awesome. Yeah, it's you know? awesome. So, so two things, uh, I almost forgot about this. So when 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 body language is there's many different ways. Be aware of it all. Coaches talking to you, you are not looking them in the eyes. Bad body language. If you're looking like yeah yeah I know, bad body language. And you know what it does? Pisses you off. Yeah, pisses, pisses me coach off. off. Yeah, I'll tell you that right now for sure. You're just better off to when the coach says hey Eric and you go yes coach, or you don't have to say yes coach, but. Hmm. Um, I need you X, Y, Z, do it, yell, whatever it is. It's a yes, yeah. coach. Yeah. Or, okay, coach. Like with some enthusiasm, with some zip. You know what I mean? Not You don't have to be zip. Just body language. Look and, at them in the eye and say, yes, coach. And just sorry to cut you off. The, the I want to put voice in that too because your voice, I'm putting that with body language yeah. because a lot of time with this kid of talking about his brother too, yeah. very soft spoken. Yeah. And it actually annoys me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like talk louder. Yeah. I can't hear what you're saying. Yeah. Talk. Yeah. 
have a voice. Yeah. You know? The other thing, though, is on, from a mental toughness standpoint, okay? You and I are playing, and you see me slouch my shoulders, slam my stick. We got them. Give me something. Yeah. Like, we show some emotional that is negative in any way. Frustration, shake your yeah. head, whatever, looking up in the air. You got me. You know that. Yeah, know this guy's frustrated. Yeah. No, sure. not everybody knows that, but but now now you you got your emotions. You let your emotions or your body language get the best of you, and that's why it's like it's a, it's like in that situation you want to just go play the game, play with passion, and and just keep trucking. Your body language speaks volumes, right? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So that's that. Energy. I don't know why we have to talk about that. You could try to have some good energy. I mean. Brian said it, and this is what I always say to people: is like I don't like being around people that don't that have shit energy that drag you down. Uh, there's people that we walk in a room and they they just throw energy all over you, and then you have no choice but to respond. And then you have people that suck the shit right out of you. Yep. Right. And those people, like, please leave. Don't come yeah. around me ever. I mean, he's a power tech as an example of that because almost every time anyone walks in that door, yeah. it's like immediate good mood. Yes. Immediately upbeat immediately getting into whatever we're getting into laughing joking around smiling yeah. rarely ever do we have anyone in here that is in a bad mood yeah. rarely ever does that happen oh you can be in a bad mood you could be in a bad mood but have some energy like it's like that happens but like it's like this is this is my thing is like you come in as like bad mood meaning i don't mean like i know what you mean I, I, know, I know what you mean because I, I, I have right. bad days yeah yeah i walk today i wasn't in a great mood today i was yeah. freaking tired on but it was a great day yeah it's a choice but right. anyways if you walk into a room or I do this podcast and I'm sitting here picking my nose, and, how's it going? Yeah, it's all right. Are you dragging your feet I'm and stuff. Here. I'm here. Yeah. yeah. How's whatever? And I go on the ice and they're like, what are you going to get back? Yeah. You're just sucking the shit out of people. Nobody wants to be around you, man. No. Nobody does. Fake it even. Like, yeah. I don't care. How are you doing? And, and you basically can by your physiology. Just move a little bit and make a decision, have up. some energy. But speak. Right, you, you go talk faster, do something, have some energy. Like, I haven't been accused a whole lot of being um, unenergetic, although I'm starting to get 53. Sure. I feel like a neutered cat sometimes, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> right. But anyways, energies. Yep. That's pretty simple. Yep. So listen, be aware of yourself. I don't give a. I don't care if you're having a bad day. If your things aren't going right on the ice, coach isn't in love with you. All that kind of stuff. You still can choose. Have some energy, and uh, so be a guy that people want to be around. Not a per, not a person that people are uh, you, you, you know making them fall asleep. Yep, perfect. Got the wheel. Yeah, you know you're talking to someone. No, don't. I know we're going on, but isn't it the worst? You're, someone's talking, and you're just sitting there going, uh, "Yeah, for sure." Right? Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, give me something. <laughs> Next one's attitude. I mean, come on. It seems like very simple. Just like why wouldn't you have a good attitude? But I guess maybe for some people, you don't. Yeah, but it but it, but lot, but honestly, man. attitude is a choice. It really is a choice. I mean, uh, George said that to you guys one day. I liked how he said it too. He goes, you know, like you get to wake up every day, you get to choose your attitude, and you really do. There's uh, something I read in a book a long time ago, and it's kind of kind of cute. But it says your your attitude, not your aptitude, determines your altitude. Do you like that? Yeah, interesting. I got to think about it more though. Your okay. attitude, attitude, not your aptitude. Not, not your aptitude determines yeah. your altitude. How high? Yeah, like, yeah. Right? No, that's kind of cute. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. But it's that's good. A, yeah, it's, it's like, good. but, 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 like, really and truly, like, really simple. You bad things can happen, but you can choose to have a good attitude about it. Now, that doesn't mean everything sunshines and rainbows, right? Right. Like, yeah, you definitely. Know, if you're, you're, you have a, if your cat has a sore paw, that doesn't make you feel good. Yeah. But you can choose to maybe do something. About it. <laughs> But you could go on with that's your day. With your, well, I don't know. Like, I don't have a bad attitude. Like, I, I don't. I don't have a bad attitude. Like, cat I don't know how to do oh, Your cat has a sore paw. That's like my go-to sometimes. Ow. I know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's 52 years living in a dressing room. That's what it is. You lose a game, you have a bad game. Right? You have a bad game. Yeah. In the middle of that game, you can start pouting. The poting is not going to help you. It's not. It's only going to dig, get, dig you a deeper hole. So your attitude is like, okay, what am I going to do about this? I'm going to work hard. I'm going to go to my ba three basic things. I'm going to do those things well. You know, maybe today's a shit sandwich day, but I'm going to make it better. Yep. Right. I got to get something out of this day. Um. You know, I'm, I'm tired. Whatever it is, you can you can choose to make that a better situation, and that's just the bottom line with with uh, attitude. Yeah, and you're going to get a feedback loop either way. 
if you have a yep. positive attitude yep. or a negative one. Right? Yep. You know? And like you said, the digging yourself a deeper hole, that's what it is. You have a bad attitude about something, it'll yep. bleed to the next thing, bleed to the next thing, bleed to the next thing. Yep. And and that's what that's what will happen. There's an example that um, it's kind of like a, a story. I'm going to butcher it, but whatever. It's basically uh, you guys, it's called uh, somebody kicks the cat. Your kid kicks the cat or something. Have you heard in this before? In the paw? Not in the paw. No, not in the paw. <laughs> Have you heard this before? So. The yeah, story, yeah, yeah. The story yeah. goes: the guys at work, yeah. the boss yells at the dad. Yeah. The dad comes home, yells yeah. at the mom. The mom yells at the kid. The kid yeah. kicks the cat, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. that—that's yeah. what it is. That it's trickle. Like the cat's fault. Yeah, it's not what the cat do. Why? You, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So the, the kid, like the, the cat, didn't do anything. But right. this is what happens: you have a, yeah. you get one thing, it goes to the next thing, goes to the next thing, goes to the next thing, and then it ends up affecting a lot of things. I right? did it with my wife the other day, driving back from Guelph, and I was so cranky about the COVID and the masks and all this stuff. And she, I, uh, whatever happened. And I, I took it out on her for two seconds and yeah. she goes, we don't have to yell at me. Um, and I was, I, I just, yeah, whatever. And I was like, Oh man, I just, I did that. I yeah. had a bad attitude. Yep. So don't do it. Now there's going to be some people who say, well, we have my mental illness and stuff. It's different, yeah, but you can still try right. Like there's effort yeah. and I'm yep. not a doctor, so I'm not going to talk about mental illness. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm not being funny. No, just, no, that's right. You know what people I mean? People have argued that. There, there are, there are yeah. people that just can't get out of a funk and that's not what I'm talking about. It's like your choice to solve a problem, your yep. choice to have a good day. For sure. To do your best to have a good day, you know, and it's, it, taking a step forward is a lot better, yep. right? You can, at least, uh, you can at least try, right? As they say... It's not how hard you hit; it's how hard you get hit and keep moving Ooh, forward. Ooh, the Rocky Balboa. But it's great, like Charlie. That. How you remember you memorized that when you were just a little. The whole speech. Love that. Oh, speech. he loved it, it's and it's so speech. good. Like these are little things. Was that you... Rocky Six? Uh, yep. The last Rocky yeah. movie. Uh, maybe five. Not Creed. We're not counting Creed. No, but it was, five or uh, six, whatever. Tom, Tommy Gun was it? Okay. Yeah, it was, it was when he's talking to his kid on the street. Yeah, great speech. If you haven't listened to that one. So, so, so speaking of that. Um, Passion is one in this 10. Yeah, of course. But when it comes to passion, like sometimes you can see in a hockey player whether they're playing with passion or not. And I think a lot of the times is when some people think too much or they think too much about who's watching or being judged or looking at another player and maybe you're not as good and you, you get in the negative thoughts mm -hmm. or you're not getting things or you generally jump into the OHL, it's easy to lose passion. It's really, it actually is easy to lose passion when the the light starts to flicker a little bit mm -hmm. and uh you start thinking about the things you have to do or the negatives but i think a lot of the times if kids just were to i actually i, I think i said that I, I know i did with charlie when he was early in this year when he was uh not questioning his life but when he was um like what's the word he was uncertain as we said but what you do is you just go play your game play your game within your system right just go play have fun playing the game have fun because when you're having fun and understand it's a game your passion comes back and you if you play with passion that's the only way that you succeed in this yeah no definitely it's the only way yeah i have i have a hard time with passion i don't really know what to say about it i haven't i haven't thought about it enough because you know because people will describe me i've said this to my with my christine before too so when I, I start talking about things that I care about, you can start to feel it yeah. come out. Or when I'm doing something that I'm really engaged yeah. in, you can feel it start to come out. But I don't know. I don't. I don't know exactly. Uh, in terms of in terms of hockey, I don't know really what to, what to add about that. I agree with what you said, but but I I don't know if it's like passion. You either have it or you don't, kind of thing. Like I don't well, know. Oh, I I would but, agree. But because well, you know what? No, because I used to love hockey, and I definitely lost it. I lost the passion yeah. for it for sure, hundred percent. Well, I'll tell you what. It's very very easy to. I remember being in junior. Like I I, I if you gave me hockey my whole life, there's not no. nothing bad about it. No. It was like pure joy. And then when I got to the business of hockey and being my first year in the OHL, with no understand like zero comprehension of what is actually going on. And the business of it was like, what's going on? Yeah. And all the stuff going around. I lost my passion for hockey 100% mm -hmm. to do that day in, day out, like because there's so many things going on. And when you lose your passion, that probably trickles into confidence. And yeah. then and then it's just a downward But Now you're playing just to play or you're playing because you think it's a dream. And it wasn't until I kind of got out of my own head and, 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 and just had fun playing the game. Yeah. I, I think that's that's what I, I want to throw on it. I guess is try to 
remember why you're doing what you're doing kind of thing. Sort of what you were saying, like you said, when you're talking to Charlie, yeah. remember why you're doing what you're doing yeah. and, and the reason why you liked playing in yeah. the first place. And that's probably something that can help you keep that when yeah. you're playing and keep that, keep that in mind. But even before you go on the ice, if you have like a little mantra, you say to yourself or something that, yeah. especially when things are shitty, cause you know, it's easy when it's easy, when you're, when everything's going well, yeah. Yeah. it's, it's easy to say, I love hockey. It's the best. It's so fun to yeah. play. But when it's not, which happens all the time to yeah. everybody at some point, you want to have things that can, can keep that, the fire going, yeah. you know, just a little bit to, yeah. to get you through. Yeah. So, the, so I, I, and I, I don't, I actually don't like the word passion because it's like, it's used very loosely and stuff. But I, when I look at it through my business, people would say that, oh, your, your, um, your passion must be hockey. It was, it was, it's not anymore. Hockey is not my passion. I love watching my son play. That's one thing I like about hockey. I, I enjoy teaching hockey, like teaching kids. But I'd say my passion, if, if you want to call it that, would be um, is, is seeing someone get a result or, or, yes. or benefiting yeah. from it. That's what I you like. So it's very part. easy to confuse what is what. Right. So, I, so I, I have the ability to do that through many avenues of my business. So having said that, when you're – so – how do I say this? So having said that, you want to be passionate about what you do, if that's the word, so that you can get up and do a great job every day. And one thing that I always remind myself of is on a bad day here, it's not very bad. It's a great day in most people's minds. Plus, I chose it. Plus, I'm doing what I love to do to a certain extent for the most part. So that helps you keep it alive. So always remember that if you're playing hockey, it's like, what what would you rather be doing than being a professional hockey player pursuing your dream as a hockey player? Yep. And if you could put that in perspective, all right. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. good. Right? right on. Next one's coachability. Um, I'll I'll do this one really quickly, but it's really important, guys. Is is being uh, being coachable means you're actually taking direction. So as we were speaking with uh, the general manager yesterday, he was speaking about that how he has one of his players that the reason he's succeeding is because he's taking information and actually taking one layer putting on another on another and he's progressing because he's taking the, the what the coach wants and he's doing it to a t asks some questions when he's told to do something he makes sure he does it the right way um whereas he's got other players on the team where it's like you think they're projected to be really high pl- uh, high end players and then you realize that there's the coachability is just not there they think they're good right. or they had they, it was an easy road there yeah. and then when it comes time to actually coach them it's it's very yeah. limited, and then your ceiling is instead of being way up there, it's here now. Right. So yeah, that's what I have to say. You got anything for that? No, that's good. Okay. Uh, do extra. Uh, I like that. It could go a lot of different ways. <laughs> I like what Brian said yesterday. He goes, you know, as a as a player, like, you know, if, if the room's dirty, do do extra, pick shit up, and all that stuff. But I I look at it more from perspective of yeah, you can go to practice and get the job done. Or you can, and then if you actually want this to work, you probably do extra. Probably means extra time on the ice working on specific things. It might be picking up the pucks, but it's just don't just do. And you know what I love about you in this job and in, in, in our work. Like this, let's be honest. This is what I would like from a hockey player: is that you are on, a, you know, whatever we you get paid, and you could very easily say, "Well, I, I'm not doing that. I, I, I I'm not staying late Friday. I'm not coming in Sunday." Um, I'm not doing actually like you can actually say that you'd have a very good argument, Mm -hmm. but you just do the job and you don't just do the job. You do it as if you own it. And at the end of the day, if everyone did that, what, I mean, the business would be incredible, Mm -hmm. but it's very hard to find. So if you do extra, um, go above and beyond of what you're asked to do in life, Mm -hmm. your results are going to be 10 times better. You'll never be able to work. Oh yeah. And it would, it would just because the extra thing uh, is is big on me, I, I love I love that one because use just use myself as as an example because I do, am willing to do those things. I now can do whatever I want. Yeah. And my bosses, which are you and Justin, let me do whatever I want. Yeah, do it. I can do. You guys done, complete, right? You guys completely trust me to do whatever I want to do. Yeah. Because you know that I'll get what you guys want done. Yeah. Hundred percent. You know that I'll do it and then some. So that if I'm coming to you guys and say, hey, I'm doing this, this, and this, you're like, yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah. Do whatever you want. Doing extra also is leadership, right? It's leadership yeah. 101. It's yeah. like, uh, for example, you and Jervin and uh, Charlie spoke to the kids the other day. They didn't have to do that. Mm-hmm. 
And it, would it make a difference if they did or didn't yesterday? No, but it actually did because you had a whole bunch of kids here that learned something. They got to ask. They may never sit in front of someone that's had more success than them, like an OHL or a pro player talking about actually how things are and make it cool for them. It's just, it's extra. It's just good, good to do. Yeah. And, but this is my, my point in bringing up what I was saying for these guys too, is like, you'll get more stuff now because you do that. Like yeah. you're not, it's, it never goes unnoticed. Like yeah. people will like the, the mentality of well, that's not part of my job. I'm not doing that. And yeah. you get a lot of that. Yeah. You got it. We were talking about it with, or they fluff it off. Well, we were talking about it with the refs out yeah. there outside yeah. today. Like, yeah. Coming on the ice on the minute, yeah. not helping put stuff yeah. away, don't want to set the net. And not all of them. Some of them are good and helped and yeah. whatever. But just as an example, a couple of yeah. them, they come right on the dot, they leave on the dot, they don't help <laughs> clean up, they don't whatever. Yeah. And I notice that. Of course. Just yeah. as I notice the good, the ones that were great, that yeah. were helping us push stuff to the side and helping yeah. us clean the nets. I'm like, hey, that's awesome. I want that guy to come back and do this again next yeah. time. Yeah. I want the best. Yeah. yeah and, then, and then you don't, you know, and then just as an extension of that. So think these ref guys come a couple times a year to help us out. Let's say... I have one that's exceptional, does a great job. And then he says, hey, do you guys mind if I hang out for a workout after? No problem. No problem. Now you have a free gym. Yeah. Look how that worked out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's what happens with a lot of people. And that's yeah. just from doing little extra stuff. It takes nothing. But an opportunity that you can get, it will be will be way more than you think. Yeah. Even if you don't see the reward from it right away. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. That's 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 awesome, man. I love it. Uh, last one, it says, be prepared. And I, I, just got, I got one story for this. Mm-hmm. And every time I ever so we did a a podcast with uh, Dr. Novetsky. Um, we were talking about mental toughness, living in the moment, all that stuff. And I was explaining, he goes, have you ever had mental toughness is um, just basically when something's in, or, or pressure comes from something that's important to you that you don't know the outcome. And that's, the, so basically you're working with the unknown and that's where you get a lot of stress. So I was talking to him about when I trained for uh, the players in Russia for Igor Larionov. When Igor asked me to go to the to Russia, and I know that might sound like you're listening to the video, you might go, "Okay, what's the big deal? You are training some players?" No, you got to understand something. It was I had a goal to to go somewhere like Russia was one of my goals to train good players in Russia and NHL players. So when Igor asked me to go train his players, I first of all asked like, "Is there like?" Um, in, in all of Russia, you don't have anyone else? He goes, no, I want you to do it. So I'm like, okay. So that's a little bit of pressure, right? I don't know what's, like, wow, unknown. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to go. Flew the flew on the plane and all this preparation, there were all the anxiety. There was a little bit of anxiety because at this point, I'm going to go, and I'm going to make it break my career, more or less. So I'm going to go to Russia where they don't speak my language and I got to make these guys better hockey players. From a uh, uh, Stanley Cup winner, uh, Red Army Olympic winner, one of the best hockey players in the whole world, trusting me with his hockey players. Pressure, right? Is it though? Like, so think about it. So I'm flying over there and I'm going, what? What? What's the ice like? Uh, seriously, what's the ice like? Well, I wonder what. It, I wonder what the, if the nets are the same. What was the like? And I had all these thoughts going through my head, all of the unknown. And I'm like, this is going to actually make or break me being like you. You think you're a big shot? Andy, do you think you're a big shot? Well, this is where the rubber meets the road. You're going to make or break it here. Because if Igor likes you, you can train anyone. If you, if it doesn't work out, you're done. You can go work with Pee Wee kids. Right? Because that's all you're good for. So when I went there, I said, okay. Kind of didn't say this stuff to myself. But the reason that I succeeded is that you can throw me on the ice with anyone, any anytime, anywhere. I will make you a better hockey player some way. Why? Because I'm prepared. I spent hours and hours and hours doing my own training. I've done hours and hours, hours of reading. I've done it hours and hours and hours and hours of clinics and training, the small guys, big NHLers and all that stuff. So I knew when, what do you want me to do? What are the players? I knew exactly what I had to do. The point is I was prepared. I went there not prepared and I didn't sit there and write, I'm going to do this drill, this drill. I just, I'm prepared. I know how to do this. I've done it a thousand times. So when I went there. The reason I got through it and had success and got hired again and continue having a great business is I was prepared. So when you go in to play hockey, if you don't eat properly, you're not prepared. If you don't get mentally, uh, um, what's my word? If you're if not mentally into it that day, you're not prepared. If you didn't do your stretches, your mobility, and all your game day routines, if you haven't done this a hundred times or a thousand times, you're not prepared. So preparation is the key to success. If you're not prepared, there's a really good chance you can fa- fail. Yeah. You failed. You failed to prepare. You prepare to prepare to fail. I'm just going to throw my one story on it for myself because. Yeah. 
I, when I played hockey, I oftentimes wasn't prepared yeah. because well, I've talked about it. Probably. I know I've talked about it before, but not eating properly, not working out properly, not resting properly, not doing the right things. All those things were factors. So for me, where I, where I was great though, was with school. I was always really prepared. And you, you've said this before, not to, to talk about myself completely, but when I would get ready for exams, I used to look around at people who like pulled all nighters, had no sleep. There's no chance they'd be able to perform at all. Not a chance. And I remember for me, I would always sit there and go like, how could you be? Yeah, you always said Yeah, that. like, how are you pulling in all? You didn't sleep? You stayed at school the whole night? That's ridiculous. Yeah. How could that be the case? Because I took the time to be prepared. I never yeah. had to do that. I, right. Every morning of any exam I had, probably for, in second year, third year, and fourth year, which, and this is engineering, like a demanding program. It mm-hmm. wasn't just nothing work. Mm-hmm. I could get up and go to the gym every morning. I never had to miss a workout. Yeah. Never. What you're working out was really important to me. But yeah. normally, your exam would take precedent yeah. over your workout. Hopefully you're ready. But I was fine. I didn't need the extra time yeah. in the morning to study because yeah. I was prepared to do that. So I yeah. didn't, the amount of stress that I didn't have yeah. because I took a little bit of extra time that most people don't want to take yeah. just to be ready. Yeah. And, and hockey is the same thing. Yeah. And it's all those things that you just said. It's the recovery piece. It's the training piece. It's you need to prepare yourself for opportunities that you're going to get. Otherwise, you won't be able to perform. And that's the bottom line. Well, that's why Steve Stamkos can, and Ovechkin can take that shot over. They prepare, that's so prepared. Well, it's so ingrained. That's, that's a, think it's about, not an accident. Think about, yeah, think about Ovechkin. Everyone's like, man, he's got a wicked shot. Well, you think like that just happened? That's right. <laughs> like, you think he, you know right. how many sh- pucks this guy probably shot? Mm-hmm. To keep teeing him off the off the point like that, it's, it's the that's biggest what he did. secret in the world. Yeah, it's not it's not worst, natural. No, he wasn't born. Worst with kept that. secret in the world is shooting from that dot. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> and he still scores. Still scores. But anyways, the point was is that the preparation, right? Um, mentally prepared. Like you know, this is real simple. But like I'm talking about him because he's here. Is you know we talk about this a lot. How going into the OHL, if you go in there blind, without the uh, having an idea like how to be mentally tough and all the things that we've done over the years like just to talk interviews yeah. all these things at the end of the day if you don't if you're not prepared you're gonna you're gonna fail yep. you know you're gonna get you're gonna hit a roadblock and then you gotta you gotta you gotta get over it then so yeah anyways. that's good no that, that that's, that's a good one to end on i like ending on that one that was cool so i know we got to keep it quick because we gotta go so we're gonna see you guys next week have a good christmas etc etc yeah. ho 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 yeah. and all that yeah. shit yeah. okay <laughs> see ya